one, one day I was asking God that all the regions, they have got signs. The Muslims, they, there is a way you know they are Muslims. You, they put on hat, they put on veil, they are circumcised. So they have, uh, you know, symbols to know they are Muslims. And the Catholics, they have symbols to know that they are Catholics. They have rosary. So they, they, if you, you, you are near Catholic, the first thing they will do is this. So you know, those are their signs. And the other religions, then I was asking, what about us, Lord? <laughs> what is our sign? And then uh, he took me in the word and say, for you, they will know you by your love. Yeah. When you love one another, they will know you are mine. And you, they will know that God sent me. They will know you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. So I just want to take, uh, I know we have done it, but I just want to take at least one minute to show love to one another. But I want to do it musically. I don't know. There's a song which says that, uh, hold somebody. Can we repeat after me? Hold somebody. Tell them I love you. Lift your hands together. And praise the Lord. That's simple. <laughs> you hold somebody. Tell them I love you. You lift your hands together. And you praise the Lord. But we are going to do it musically. Hold somebody. Tell them I love you. Lift your hands together. And praise the... Come on, do it. Uh -huh. Hold some, somebody. Tell them I love you. Uh-huh. And pray. Can we stand on our feet for a moment and do it with the musical? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so uh, if you can, I want you to move. You hold somebody, one, then you got another one, and then the third one, and you go back to your seat. <laughs> hold somebody. <laughs> Tell them I love you. Uh -huh. Lift your hands together and pray. <laughs> Come on, then you hold some. Get another one. Tell them I love you. Uh huh. Lift your hands together and pray. The. Come on, another one. Hold somebody. <laughs> Tell them I love you. <laughs> Lift your hands together and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If I had a keyboard, then I would do that. But to thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verses 1. And if you are there, you say, Amen. I'm reading from verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Father God, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for this moment, Lord. We pray that you bless your word. By the end of it, the glory and honor will always come back to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to use the subject this afternoon that Jesus is all we need. Amen. Jesus is all we need. Jesus is all in all. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is all you need. Now, the Bible says that in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through prophets, through visions, through many other things. We thank God for men like Moses, Noah, Abraham, all great men of God. So the Bible says in the past, God spoke to the people in those days in, in various ways, using the prophets, dreams, signs here and there, so that they could understand God. We thank God for the men of, the, of those days. But now, verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Wow. The sun is the, is the radiance of God's glory, and is the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. 
after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So the Bible said that in the past God spoke to our forefathers through prophets and other ways. But in these last days, he's not going to speak to us. He has already spoken to us by his son. Through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus is the exact representation of God. All the prophets, all men of old, all the righteous men in the past, they represented God, but not exactly. Because they had all their weaknesses. They tried to, show, uh, to ask God, but at the same time, then they messed up. There is a man like Elijah who came and said, uh, God, if God is for you, then worship God. So he killed 400 you know, uh, uh, prophets of Baal. But when a woman spoke, this man was afraid and ran away. God does not run away when he's, you know, was challenged. So, but Elijah ran away. So all those people, they were great, they did great things, but they had their weaknesses. They could not, you know, represent God exactly as he was. But now the Bible said that God has spoken to us through his son, whom is the, the exact representation of his being. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Sometimes we don't know what we have. Sometimes we don't know the Jesus we believed in. It's like we are, we are like other religions. We are like other sects. We are like other things. When we have Jesus, we really don't know what we have you know, to a certain degree that we, we are so miserable not knowing whom we believed. But the God we believed in, the Jesus we believed in, the Bible said is the exact representation of the Father. Is the exact representation of God. If you want to know God, look to Jesus. If you want to know how God smiles, look to Jesus. If you want to know how God gets angry, look to Jesus. If you want to know the things that makes God angry, you should know which things made Jesus angry when he came to church and he found the people doing a merchandise instead of praying. He was annoyed and he turned all the tables. Those are the things that annoy God when the church of God is no longer a church but a merchandise or a thing of those things. But the church must be a house of prayer, worshiping God, putting God on being number one. So those are the things that annoyed Jesus. So when you want to know how God gets annoyed, look to Jesus. When you want to know how God loves, see how Jesus loved because Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want to know how God answers prayers, look to the way Jesus answered prayers. When people ask for things, how did he react? The way he reacted, that's the way God reacts when we pray to him. Amen. There, there was a man who came to him, he had leprosy, and said, Master, Jesus, Rabbi, if you are willing, you can make me whole. What did Jesus answer? Say, oh, I'm willing. I'm more than willing. Be whole. That's the way God answers our prayers, because Jesus is the exact representation of our Father. Everything about Jesus is great. Everything that is connected to Jesus is awesome. Everything that is near Jesus is great. Everything that comes near Jesus becomes special. Everything that comes to Jesus is amazing. Whatever is connected to Jesus is supernatural. Whatever comes near Jesus, this Jesus I'm talking about, this Jesus I love so much, this Jesus that saved my life, this Jesus, whatever comes near him becomes so special. Praise the name of the Lord. You talk about his conception. He was conceived different from all people who have ever lived. There was no man involved. The Holy Spirit just came and overshadowed Mary and said, you have a son. And said, how can it be? Because this is not the way things work. I don't have a man. The, the angel said, don't worry. That's why what you are going to give birth will be called the Holy One of God. Because even his conception was special. 
There was no husband involved. Praise the name of the Lord. When he was in the womb, he was so special that one day Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was also pregnant. But when they, they, they began to greet each other, the Bible said the baby in the womb of Elizabeth, not the baby in the womb of Mary. Not the power of Jesus. He knows the power. So we, even in the womb, Jesus was making a difference. I remember my wife when she was pregnant and the baby maybe should go to the other side say, oh honey, her touch here, the baby's making some movements. But the Bible said the baby in the womb of Elizabeth did not make movements. He leaped. I don't know how he did that, but the Bible said he leaped with joy. And when he leaped, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues and began to prophesy. Jesus in the womb makes people be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how special Jesus is. Even in the womb, he makes a difference. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything connected to Jesus, his baptism was special. Let me tell you, Jesus wakes up one morning, he goes to a store. He looks for a nice shoot. He said, that one will be the one for me. I don't know which stores you have here. Maybe Walmart. He goes to Walmart. He buys a shoot. <laughs> then he puts on. Once the shoot comes on the body of Jesus, that shoot becomes special. It becomes different. And there was a lady who had an issue of blood. He got that revelation, she got that revelation that everything about Jesus is special. So she came behind and said, I will not touch Jesus. I just want to touch his garment. Because I know even his garment is special. So when she touched the garment, immediately she was healed. If the garment of Jesus can heal, what case can it? Jesus, everything about him is special. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever is connected to Jesus, whatever is about Jesus, whatever is, you know, even saliva. It's not good for, uh, for, for some people when you are uh, among people and, 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 and you speak somewhere. But when Jesus, you come to Jesus, even his saliva is special. The man came blind. Jesus said, no problem. He spit on the ground and he began to make some mud. Because even the slave of Jesus is awesome, is great, is special. And he put on his eyes and the man went and washed and came back seeing. Even the slave of Jesus is special. Everything about Jesus is special. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. His hand was special. His body is awesome. Even his donkey was special. The donkey he rode on was a special donkey. It, it, his, his donkey doesn't just move on bare ground. He, it moves when they have laid clothes there. Then the donkey goes on. Even the donkey of Jesus, just a donkey. Because everything that comes and gets connected to Jesus becomes special. His suffering was special. His stripes were special. His wounds were special because by his wounds we are healed. Everything that you can connect to Jesus becomes so special. His wounds heals us. Even the dead. If you die and you bear the name, the Bible says in the book of the Revelation 14, 13, that now here, this the voice came from heaven. From now, you write, blessed are the dead. Ah! Even the dead are blessed. Everything about Jesus, if the dead are blessed, what about you who was alive and well? Thank you, Jesus, because everything about you is special. So everything connected to Jesus is special. He is powerful. It is glorious. His grave was special. His death was special. The way he resurrected was special. Everything about Jesus is wonderful. Praise the name of the Lord. There is no one, there is not anyone who has had had an encounter with Jesus and remained the same. You just can't, you just can't have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same. Maybe that's not Jesus. The Jesus I know, you have an encounter with him, you make a 180 degrees turn around. Because once you have an encounter with him, things change. 
praise the Lord. There was a woman who was known to be a prostitute and she was professional in taking other people's husbands. And whenever you saw that lady with your husband, don't ask, he is gone. That was her professional. So one day, she had an, a, a husband in the home, and she went to the well to get some water. When he reaching there, he found Jesus seated there, and they began to have an encounter. The Bible says the woman did not go back to the husband. The woman did not go back home. She left her water jar. You cannot have an encounter with Jesus, and you continue with that water jar. When she came with the encounter with Jesus, she left her water jar and she went into the city. The Bible says the whole city came to see who Jesus was. There was an uproar that is something is happening in the city. Even the husband who was at home heard something going on and said, what is happening? He asked some people, what is happening? I hear an uproar. Many people are making noise. Say, you don't know. Are you the one who doesn't know? There is a great evangelist who is in the city. Who is that one? They told him the name. Say, no, the one I know is a prostitute. Let me tell you, at home, he was a prostitute. When he had an encounter with Jesus, things changed. In the city, he is now a preacher of the gospel. Because once you have an encounter with Jesus, Jesus is the destiny changer. Things change. Let me tell you, a prostitute who was renowned in the city, she was now an evangelist. Do not minimize or despise yourself. I cannot make it. Me, I'm not called for that. There is no one who's not called for what? Whoever founds Jesus, there is a task you have to do because Jesus is the destiny changer. Praise the name of the Lord. Here comes a murderer. So he's leaving Jerusalem to go and kill and to go and persecute the, 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 the disciples. On his way, he, has, he found Jesus and they have an encounter. After that, the man who was a thief, he was a murderer, who was a persecutor. Now he turns around and then goes and begins to preach the gospel. In Damascus, he's the preacher. In Jerusalem, they know him as a murderer. In, in Damascus, now he's the preacher. Jesus changes destiny, you know, you know, destinies. Once you have an encounter with Jesus, things must change. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I went to a certain village in Uganda. They were worshipping a big demon. And this demon was staying in a stone, somewhere in the stone. And they told me, you cannot be here when these demons are here. I told them, I don't, I, I don't care. I don't, you, you don't worry. I have come with the gospel. So we had a crusade for one week. And the go let me tell you, those people did witchcraft to the highest level to, in order to stop the crusade. The rain came so powerful. Every day the rain was coming. But I stood on the pulpit and I said, as the Lord lives, there will be no rain in this ground. There will be no rain on this ground. So I made an announcement that there will be no rain on this ground. So when people heard me saying that, and the rain came, all the neighboring villages, it was raining. They came to see, to, to disprove what I said, that rain has come. When they came to the crusade ground, that only part, that village, was no rain. And people are saying, Who, what kind of God is this? I'm telling you what I have seen. I'm telling you what I have tested. I'm telling you what I have touched. When you have Jesus, do not be afraid of new cultures. How should, should, what should I say? The cultures are there. Let me tell you. They told me not to go to Mexico. That you know Mexico is dangerous. Why do you go to Mexico? You preach the gospel here in the US. Preach the gospel in Africa. You live around alone in Mexico. I said when I have Jesus and Jesus is in me. And I feel the spirit of God convincing me to go. Let let me go. Let me tell you, I went and the Mexican believed Jesus and their lives were turned around. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I have so many things I can attack. To give. More than 40 items I can give one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, but time cannot allow me. But let me give you one or only one item, the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. You know, man was given the power and the authority and the mandate to give names. 
That is authority was given to Adam in the garden. Say, man, you are free to name whatever you want. If you see this is a lion, it's okay. If you, you call it something, it's okay. So people don't know how to give names. Even doctors, they know how to give names. When the COVID came, they said COVID-19. That's the name they gave it. Maybe they would have said maybe uh, whatever other name, we would have taken it by that name. Even now, 2023, we are still calling it COVID-2019. COVID-19, but we're no longer in 19. But that's the name was given. Doctors have names, names of cancer, names of diseases. They, you, you can even describe your name. Fear is a name. Everything is a name. So all those names are there. But the name of Jesus is above all other names. So in that village, I declared the name of Jesus. And the man who was worshiping that big demon gave his life to Jesus. He came to me and said, young man, I see you are a young man. You don't know the things, but if I surrender to Jesus, these demons are going to kill me. I say, no demon will even touch you. So he went into the stones and he brought all the, 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 the articles he was using to worship the witchcraft. And all the people who were following him, they told him, you are going to die. Don't go to that crusade. But he brought the things. We put it on the crusade. Then I told my boys, come on, let's get fire and paraffin and burn it. And we burn everything in front of them all now they said tomorrow all these boys will be dead so that was an advertisement to us because all other villagers they came to see us dead the following day but to their surprise when they came we were alive and kicking and speaking the name of Jesus because there is power in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus demons flee and tremble in the name of Jesus no you know, sicknesses leave in the name of Jesus fear go in the name of Jesus there is no any other name that can stand against the name of Jesus let me tell you my brothers and sisters do not be afraid when you have the name of Jesus. I don't know how I can explain, but I have seen the name of Jesus is so powerful than any other name. I went to a village and they told me, Richard, they told me, the pastor, I, I was, it was in Tanzania. I went to Tanzania and that, it, it, it's an island. They say on that island, there are so many witches, they can bewitch you. And when I looked there, the pastor told me, pastor, be very careful. You have to pray so much because here demons come for you. And in the morning, you find yourself on the mountain on your bed sleeping. And that was their common practice. On that village, uh, ladies go to fetch water from a different area. Because you cannot go to, the, to fetch water when you are dressed. Because when you go and you are dressed, then you are drawn. So they will see him, they do the practice they do. You, you put off all your clothes and you go and you fetch water, then you come back. So they told me, that's the system here. But when I went there with the name of Jesus, I said, no, no, no. We are going not to butt down to the systems and the rules and the systems of, 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 of this island. We are going to break the systems of this island. So I went there fully dressed and I told the guys, let's go with our car. We drove our car and we began to fetch water and clean the car. And everyone, the villagers, we are saying, you guys, you are going to die. Let me tell you, up to now, we are still alive. We broke the system in the name of Jesus. So whatever things happens, before you are so much afraid, before you are so much you know, you know, frightened, first seek and know the name you have. Say, Lord, this is happening. But your name has never failed. Your name has never failed. Your name, it doesn't matter the, the great systems of this world. The name of Jesus will change those systems. I don't know how, but what I know, the systems will be changed. What is happening in America? What is happening in Europe? What is happening in the Western world? God, the fear that is happening, things are, going, are taking place. Let me tell you, the name of Jesus stands still and say, no matter what comes my way, the name of Jesus is going to overcome at the end of the day. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. My time is gone. But I want to wind up by saying this. When Moses went before Pharaoh, 
and say, who are you? Then Moses brought his rod, his staff. He threw it down. It became a snake. So Pharaoh said, that is nothing. We can do the same. So he called all his magicians. I don't know how many. Two, three, a hundred you can name. Let's say there were a hundred. They came into the room with all their sti sticks, their staffs, and they threw them. They all became snakes. That's what the Bible says. So it was now a party of the snakes were just there. Everywhere, green snakes. You know, every snake had a name. I don't know here. But in, in, in Africa, every snake has a name. There is uh, the, how we call the cobra. There is the adder. This, so the, the, the room was full of snakes. Even the snake of Moses was among them. It was, a, you know, it was a dance of snakes. Everywhere snakes. Everywhere snakes were moving around. And then... For a while, the snake of Moses lifted up its head and said, I've never seen such a party like this. This is the great banquet. This is the buffet. I'm going to enjoy all kinds of food. And the snake of Moses began to swallow. It began to swallow all the snakes around. It began to swallow the green snakes, the black snakes, the red snakes. Whatever name was there, it began to swallow. And by the end of it, it was only the snake of Moses around. And said, where are other snakes? And the Pharaoh had no answer. Today, maybe you came with names. Thank you, my brother. You came with some names in your life. There are names ringing, echoing in your life. Echoes of these uh, names of diseases, sicknesses, what the doctors told you, names of rebellion, names of, you know, there are so many other names. There are, thing, there are so many things you are afraid of. When they mention them, you say, oh my God. Names of erogibility, names of whatever. There are so many names around moving. In, and you say, Lord, what, what's, what, is, what is happening? Names of pain in your, in, in your body. Names of sickness, names of fear, names of sorrow, names of depression. You can give whatever name you give. But I want to tell you in these few minutes that the name of Jesus is lifting up its head and is going to have a party. Hey, the name of Jesus is having a party right now. It's going to swallow all those other names that have been in your life. The name of Jesus is having a banquet. It is a buffet. The name of Jesus is going to enjoy every other name that has been exalting itself above the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is lifting up his head to begin to swallow, to swallow. I don't know what names you came with. Names of diabetes, names of sugar diabetes, names of pressure, high blood pressure, names of any. You, can, you know the names. I don't know them. You know the names, but the name of Jesus is lifting up his head to swallow all those names. The names of fear, the names of poverty, the names of sickness, the names of this. The name of Jesus is lifting up his head to swallow up those names in Jesus' mighty name. If you can, and stand up on your feet. If you cannot, you can stay seated. But I want us then to, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to take over right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Take your way, take your way, take your way in the name of Jesus. Take your way. There are people who came with sicknesses. There are people who came with pains. But right now, in the name of Jesus, the name that's above all other names, the name of Jesus is above all fear, is above all cancers, is above all death, is above all fears in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that the name of Jesus will take over. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Right now, I take authority. If you have any pain in your body, if you have any pain, just touch your hand where the pain is. If you have any pain, you just reach out your hand. 
If you can tack there and say that the name of Jesus, I'm going to, to join to have to join my faith with your faith, and we are going to declare and decree the healing power of God. Jesus healed everyone who went to him. Jesus healed everyone who went to him. There is no one that went to Jesus, and Jesus said, You I will not heal you. Whoever went to Jesus was healed. So the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come against everyone every pain. I come against every fear. I come against every disease. You diseases hear me. Yeah, I come against every pain in the back, every pain in the legs, every pain in the bones, every pain in the teeth, every pain in the brain, every pain I come against you in the name of Jesus. Leave the people of God. Their bodies are not the temple of diseases their bodies is the temple of the holy spirit receive your healing right now receive your healing right now dear holy spirit you are not dwelling in a temple with any other person you must dwell in the temple when you are the only one alone holy spirit take over in the name of jesus i command healing i command healing i command healing Pain, go. Fear, go. In the name of Jesus. There is no any other name that can stand against the name of Jesus. Fear, go. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. For in your name, there is no any other name that can save us. Only the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for you. the power that saved us from sin is the same power that saves us from sicknesses. It's the same power that saves us from fear. Let your salvation come to each and every one today. Father, we thank you. And Father, there's no distance in the spirit. There are some people who are here, but they have their sick ones in the hospitals sick ones at home. Father, we even we reach them right now. We pray for those who are in hospitals. We pray for those who are at home. We pray for those who are not feeling well today. We command the same power that is here to reach out to them and let them be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you praise for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you, Lord. Come on, go on and thank him. Go on and thank him. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. I want to make one more prayer. I know the Lord has blessed you. I know the Lord has given you money. But there is more than that. God can do more than that. The Bible said that Isaac sold in the land and he became rich. The Bible continues that the man continued to grow rich until he became more wealthy. I'm praying for your finances right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, let your people increase. They are especially the people who are after the kingdom. The people who are after the affairs of the kingdom. Lord, prosper them, because by prospering them, you are prospering the kingdom. The kingdom will advance. Father, with money, many things are made easier. Father, bless them mightily. Bless them financially. Increase their income, Lord. Add on their income, oh my Lord. Protect them and keep them safe. And I come against everything that stores their money. I come against every unnecessary things that come and take away their money. I break its power in the name of Jesus. Our money, Lord, is to do your work, is to do the work, the kingdom mandate. Father, I pray for a special blessing upon them. Thank you, Lord. And above all, Lord, I pray for the bishop, the father of this house, and the mom, oh Lord. Father, protect them. They are, they are the star. They are the guiding star of this ministry, Lord. Father, keep them safe. As the Bible said that they don't go to war. They do not go to war because if you go to war, we don't want the, the, the star, the, pay, the light of Israel to be, uh, to be you know, uh, turned down. Father, we pray for them, protect them, give them more ideas, give them more vision to know where to take this ministry, Father. We thank you. I pray this is a great ministry, Lord. This is a great church, Lord. I pray for the increase. Many souls are coming into this, uh, in the, into this building. Father, we thank you that prayer, expansion, and goodness will continue 
continue to stay in this place in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because we have prayed all these things in the name that is above all other names, the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Bishop has advised me, those who are watching us online, those who are watching us on television, we speak the same to you in the name of Jesus. As I say, there is no distance in the spirit world. The same power that works here. You have heard the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. The word you have heard is coming to you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. And I challenge you, make it your ambition. Make it your number one role to always come and be in person to church. We thank God for technology. We thank God for Zoom. We thank God for whatever is happening. But it's more blessed when you are in person. So may God bless you and keep you safe. And I command healing wherever you are watching from. I command you to touch where you have their pain and I command healing in Jesus' mighty name. The name of Jesus is glorifying itself in your family. Some of you, your marriages are not good, but the name of Jesus even above the names of marriages. God is bringing peace in your marriage that people will see and know that Jesus is the only one who is in control in this marriage. Father, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.